Hey, what's up, Underground? JD Hansen, 79, Joshua. Uh, this month, I'm reviewing the 316 soft plastic shad. I'll close up for you. When I first got the bait in the mail, uh, I was excited. Obviously, we don't know what the bait is until it arrives. Got it out of the package, super stoked. Uh, first thing I did, tied it on, went down the lake. I wanted to see how this joker swam. Uh, I, I fished the 316 bluegill. It's the only bait that they got that I know of that, that's similar in body shape and size. Uh, there's the canine that's out there. Um, it's relatively close. I think it's a little bit bigger. So first impressions, get it on the water. Uh, I used the stock hook that came with it rather large hook. It's a it's an owner hook. I believe it's a it's a one knot. Um, I wasn't really keen on on using this hook too much just because when it's rigged, I don't know if you can catch that in the camera there, but the sides of this hook, you know, the, it sticks out way past the size of the bait. I didn't like that. So what I did is I dropped down to a much smaller hook. So what this allows me to do is fish it uh, the same way, but potentially getting less snacks, getting less hung up in the weeds, on a brush, on a stump, something like that. A lot of the ponds I fish, uh, got a lot of laydowns, a lot of stumps where I want to drag this bait through. Not necessarily drag through, but slow roll it uh, and see if I can't get a bite. So in, in downsizing hooks, it definitely allowed me to do that. Um, so something you might want to consider too if you're fishing open water sure use the bigger hook but if you're fishing uh, areas that's going to have some lay down some brush some stumps a lot of weed lines and things like that and you're concerned with hang ups and, and whatnot you might consider downsizing a, uh, your hook to you don't know, have such uh, a gap on the sides with the size of the hook hanging out so uh, in comparison to the bluegill uh, that's the only bait I really have at the time to go ahead and compare. If you look at the width of the shad compared to the, the gill, uh, the gill is a lot fatter through here than the shad is. The shad is a lot slimmer profile, whereas the gill, nice fat, looks like a bluegill. So when you're swimming this bait through the water, it uh, a lot of tail kick, a lot of tail twist, the tail twist like this, and a lot of side to side rolling. All right, so the bluegill, it does it as well, but not near as much as the shad, in my opinion, from what I observed while I was out there doing swim tests. Uh, there was a gentleman on the underground, uh, Schmidt 1 2, Schmidt 12. He uh, had posted how to do the owner beast hook mod on the bluegill. I really like this mod. As you can see, I did it on the bluegill. It allows me to actually fish it in trees, uh, in laydowns, and not really be so concerned with getting hung up. Uh, makes it a lot more weedless. And uh, so, what I wanted to do for you guys today is take the shad, and I wanted to actually do that mod on film so everybody could get an idea of what it takes to do that. Now, first things first, you got to remove this insert. Now I have the insert that I removed from the bluegill. That's all it is. The uh, the line through and whatever type of material this is that they use uh, to weight that down. So first things first, you got to remove that. Now what you want to do is you want to work away, work the sides of the bait off of it, and it pops out relatively easy. Now I, I've already pre I've already done this so. It doesn't pop out as easy it is as it is right now. So just work the sides away. If need be, use a, uh, a small razor knife, exacto knife, something of that nature. Once you get it cleanly popped out, all you're going to do is just twist it and slightly pull down on it, and it'll go ahead and pop right out of the bait. Now, the hook I'm using is an 8 aught owner beast hook. Uh, these hooks, these hooks are awesome. I really like them compared to the other hooks on the market. One, they come with the center lock already on it, which makes it really nice for rigging. So now 
that you've got the weight removed. You've got to actually open up the belly of this bait so that you can make room for that hook. When a fish comes up and slams it, that hook will go ahead and expose itself and give you a good hookup ratio. So take your razor knife, get your bait. All right, you want to go ahead and lay that hook on there, whatever size hook you're going to use, whether it's a, an 8-aught, a 10-aught. Uh, Schmidt 112 was using a 10-aught. I don't have any 10-aughts. I have 8, so that's what I'm using. Uh, go ahead and lay it on there. Get you an idea where that hook's going to lay. All right, so I'm using my thumbs there. Now all I'm going to do is just simply take my razor and just go ahead and make my incision. And this may take you, you know, a few minutes, whatever. Be careful you don't cut yourself. I'm kind of doing it free-handed here, so, you know, disclaimer, please do not cut yourself and come back and say, well, this is the way J.D. Hansen 79 did it, because, yeah. So make sure you're using G2 here and not cut yourself. Try and stay down the center of the bait the best you can. Notice I'm just taking my time, making small, small movements making sure I'm getting right where I want to be. Okay, now that I got the bait cut, I'm going to go ahead and open it up. All right, I can see I need to make get a little deeper. And like I said, it's going to take a couple minutes. That's fine. Just go ahead and take your time. One thing I notice is once you actually get the bait cut, you can go ahead and peel it apart, hold it with your fingers, and just take that razor blade or the X-Acto knife and run it right down the center of that cut, and it makes it a little bit easier to go ahead and continue with your cut, making sure you're cutting through the bait. Go ahead and uh, test your hook, make sure you, see I need, I'm only about right there, I want to get a little bit more, so I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more incisions here. now all right so what you want to do is you want to take that center lock and uh, pretty much right where the center of the mouth is right here you want to go ahead and start that center uh, center lock go ahead and screw it in there that's the pot the spot that uh, Schmidt recommended I used it it works really well as far as getting the bait centered and making sure it swims really well so same principle for rigging any type of hook uh, any hollow body swim bait, uh, you know, figure out where your hook's going to lay at, you know, get you a, a reference point, go ahead and lay that hook in there, and all you're going to try and do is just come through the center of this bait best you can so it comes right out top, the hook comes right out the top. Once you got it out, there you go. Nice. It's clean. It's still weighted. All right. Uh, so a fish comes up and slams it. Nice little surprise. Plenty of uh, space for that that hook to go ahead and clear all that plastic. Make sure you get it reset, and it sets right in there. Uh, let's talk about some gear that I use. Uh, I have a LDC heavy custom and an LDC extra heavy custom. I fished this bait with both rods. Uh, on, the ex on the extra heavy I have a Calcutta 400. I was using 30 pound uh, Berkeley big game on that. It, it fished rather well. The reel however uh, because it's such a big reel light bait I mean it casted. However I found that the Corrado 300 size reel fished on the heavy rod uh, was more suited to this. Now you could fish this on your conventional, you know, uh, flipping gear, your, your punching gear, whatever you're going to use. A 7-Eleven heavy, extra heavy rod the baits right at 1.8 ounces, almost 2 ounces. So, you know, your bigger, stiffer, uh, conventional type tackle will definitely handle this. Uh, I know most of us out here are running custom stuff as far as our terminal tackle goes. 
Uh, as far as uh, hook up ratios with this, the areas I'm fishing right now, there's a big bluegill bite going on, so I was uh, unable to stick a fish with this bait. You know, uh, say what you will, hey, I didn't stick anything. Uh, I do appreciate uh, 316 and Micah giving us the opportunity to review these baits. Um, if anybody has any comments or anything like that, hey, PM me. Otherwise, it is what it is. Appreciate you on the ground. Look forward to reading all the other reviews and uh, learning some things and being able to put that to use when I get out there on in different bodies of water and be able to utilize this bait. Until then, hey, tight lines, gents.